there are certain things you do to take care of yourself. You see your doctor for an annual physical. Excellent. And your dentist twice a year. Open wide. Your credit needs checkups too, so you can head off problems that could cause you to be turned down for a mortgage, a car loan, even a credit card. And now you can get that checkup right on your computer. Log on to freecreditreport.com and we'll show you how to find out online what's in your credit report, who's been checking it, and whether everything's accurate. It's easy, convenient, and online at freecreditreport.com. So log on today. Because when it comes to your credit, freecreditreport.com is just what the doctor ordered. Find out how to get your free credit report. Log on to FreeCreditReport.com today. I live in America. I live in America. I live in America. I live in America. We live in America. We are an American family. We've worked hard. We work hard for what we have. And we appreciate what we've earned. We love our work. We love our work. We love our kids. We love our kids. Our time together. Our time together. Our time together is very important. We've worked hard to build a good life for ourselves. I take a lot of pride in that. For us, it's the American dream. It's the American dream. At ANC, we believe in delivering news that's relevant without hype or sensationalism. ANC brings an honest picture of life in America, how real people and real families work to make it better. Honesty. 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 Relevance. Relevance. News that's important to me. And now recapping the hour's top stories. Military experts warned against the U.S. mounting a solo attack against Iraq. Former generals told a Senate committee that a street war in Baghdad could result in staggering U.S. casualties. Israel's siege of Yasser Arafat's compound is drawing fire from many, even the White House. Plus, the government has developed a plan to vaccinate Americans in the event of a terrorist attack using smallpox. While those living along the Gulf Coast keep an eye on Isidore, those living in the north keep an eye on their temperature gauges. In most of the northwest, it's another sunny, warm day. The exception is Montana, where a cold front is taking hold. Another chilly day in the upper Midwest. Rain is likely in the Dakotas, and temperatures will run several degrees below normal. Day will break cool in the northeast, but things will warm up with highs peaking in the seasonal 60s and 70s. It's possible Isidore could make a comeback in the Gulf. Showers likely in western Florida and New Orleans. Mostly cloudy through the state of Texas. A few clouds in Oklahoma City, El Paso, and Albuquerque. Highs in the 80s. In southern California and the desert southwest, temperatures peak above the seasonal average. No precipitation is forecast for the region. On Wednesday, a few showers pop up in the upper Midwest, Denver, and Montana, and several places in the southeast. Clouds in the east and sun in the west. I'm Rita Sherman, All News Channel. Migraine sufferers may find new hope and relief in an unusual place. And more evidence about the benefits of aspirin. This time it can help your mind. Jody Davis has those stories and more in Your Health. Chalk up another one for aspirin. Researchers think it may help prevent or delay Alzheimer's disease. The Puget Sound Health Care System study followed people age 65 and up. Researchers found those who took aspirin regularly for more than two years were less likely to show signs of dementia. The longer the participants took aspirin, the less likely they were to develop Alzheimer's-like symptoms. Aspirin has been shown to benefit heart patients, but in some cases it can cause stomach bleeding. The study is published in the journal Neurology. Aspirin won't prevent a migraine headache, but an epilepsy drug might. Scientists say migraines are caused by unusual activity in the brain's nerve cells somewhat like epilepsy. A scientist with Thomas Jefferson University studied the effect of the epilepsy drug topiramate on migraine sufferers. Half the patients noted a decrease in the number of migraines and their intensity. 
Should you fret if your burger-loving kid decides to give up meat? More and more kids are declaring themselves vegetarians, but can that really give them all the nutrition they need? Colleen Burns has some answers. Let's see if that's warm enough. A couple of years ago, Liza Lieberman made a New Year's resolution to quit eating meat. She's been a vegetarian ever since. Today's lunch with cousin Carla and friend Amanda is naturally meat-free. It's made me feel more conscious, like, yeah, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I'm really thinking about what I'm eating. For Liza, the decision was mostly a matter of taste. And, like, turkey sandwiches in my lunches at school, they just got so boring. And I was like, one day, I just, just like, I don't like this. I don't know why I'm still eating it. Millions of Americans call themselves vegetarians, and teenagers are often the first in a family to make the choice. Liza's parents support her decision by keeping the kitchen stocked with good and nutritious options. For protein, she still eats fish, but her diet staple, lots and lots of pasta. One of the things that we do know about vegetarianism is that it's a, it's a perfectly normal, uh, wonderfully healthy style for eating. Yes, when it's done correctly. Now, what do I mean by correctly? Um, it goes back to variety. You can have a perfectly healthy vegetarian diet if you eat a variety of, of plant foods, if you eat a variety of grains, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. There we go. For Liza, the changes oh, meant a healthier and more creative Thank approach to eating. Actually, I've, I feel like I get a much bigger variety. Now that I'm a vegetarian and I'm like open to more things, there's a lot more variety. Want some Parmesan? Teens who go veggie need to make sure they get enough iron, calcium, and B12, nutrients that may be missing in a completely meat and dairy-free diet. Something that helps, eat calcium-rich vegetables and fortified cereal. More often than not, a teen's decision can make a family healthier as well. This is Colleen Burns, All News Channel. Now, experts warn in some cases going vegetarian may be an indication a teenager is getting too focused on food and weight control. Ask your teen why. If they're making the decision for healthy reasons, there is no cause for worry. And that's a look at your health. I'm Jody Davis. They were some of the darkest days in American history. They involved huge loss of life on our own soil. And now a Massachusetts town is adding one more piece to the history of the Civil War. That story is coming up on All News Channel. On TV, best two phone free systems for 19.95 plus shipping and handling. Phone free is backed by our 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-800-220-1712. Call now. There is one surefire way to know it's state fair time in the Lone Star State. Today, the 52-foot-tall talking cowboy known as Big Tex took his post at the fairgrounds in Dallas. Big Tex was first introduced in 1952. Just this year, he got a new outfit, complete with a giant belt buckle. The Texas State Fair starts on Friday and runs through mid-October. In the midst of the War on Terror, a town in Massachusetts took a moment yesterday to remember war heroes from long, long ago. The town of Sturbridge added another name to its 130-year-old Civil War monument. Tina Detell has the details. The bell atop the Federated Church in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, tolled 28 times, once for each resident who served with the 15th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry Regiment and died during the Civil War. A chapter in history revisited and made right. The uh, men who left town had certain expectations, and I think one expectation was that uh, they would be remembered and honored should they not return. Brian Burns first discovered one soldier was missing from this monument when he read an article written at the turn of the 20th century. The soldier's name was William Blood. 
Blood was a 21-year-old shoemaker from Sturbridge who joined the 15th Massachusetts Regiment in 1861. He died a year later at the Battle of Antietam in Sharksburg, Maryland. When this monument was first dedicated in 1871, nine years after his death, none of Blood's relatives were believed living in Sturbridge, which may be why he was left off the list. N. Wright and William Lawson Blood. Now when the roll call is read, they can say... For the very first time, all present. David Ward's great-grandfather, Colonel George Hull Ward, led Blood's regiment. One rank, right, eight. He now serves as the honorary colonel for the reconstituted regiment, which reenacts battle scenes, and this weekend helped rededicate a Civil War monument, which now provides a proper place to remember a soldier once forgotten. This is a man that lived here. His house is right over the hill where he's brought up. Uh, he's flesh and blood. In Sturbridge, Massachusetts, Fire! Tina Detell, NECN. And that's our report for this half hour. I'm Stan Turner. Thank you very much for being with us. Across America in 30 minutes, this is All News Channel.